In August, I was coaxed into attending the UK's, and indeed, I believe the world's, biggest MESBG tournament, Ardacon. It was hosted in central Manchester, which isn't the usual kind of idyllic destination I go for on these trips. But Tim here had persuaded me to come with a wacky list idea and a promise that it would be a good time. He'd very kindly surrendered his room in the nice, fancy, luxury Mercure Hotel where the event was being hosted and slummed it with me and the dog in a Premier Inn. So, after a disturbed night's sleep in which the dog had emphatically refused to settle, we went out for an early morning walk. It was difficult to find a nice green space in central Manchester, so we just went and played a dreary game of fetch in a car park near some rundown old buildings. But we made up for it by thoroughly abusing the hotel's all-you-can-eat breakfast policy, and, um, briefly setting fire to their, uh, bagel toaster. After breakfast, we made the brief amble across the field from the travel lodge to the Mercure Hotel. This is where we'd play Ardicon's one day doubles tournament, and for me it would set up a weekend that was much more than I could possibly have bargained for. Welcome to Battle Camper. Now remember, as always, whenever I go to an event, every miniature that I take is assigned to one of my Patreons so that we can see who's lucky and who's unlucky and reward great deeds. There are only seven models in this potentially quite cheeky list. We start with Quickbeam, who's assigned to Sean Clark. The army is led by the mighty Treebeard, assigned to Patrick Lundvist. Finally, for the three Ent heroes, we have Beachbone, assigned to Doc Munoz. They are assisted by the living nightmare himself, Tom Bombadil, assigned to Tom Marshall. And of course, we have the two hobbits who accompany Treebeard and always seem to be facing down impossible odds, Merry and Pippin. Merry is assigned to James Twomley, and Pippin to James Russell. Our first game of the day was against Johnny and Harry. They brought the Halls of Thranduil and Iron Hills. Thranduil led four Palace Guard, one with a spear, eight Mirkwood Elves, four with bows, and two Mirkwood Cavalry. The Iron Hills contingent was led by Dane Ironfoot on his pig. He had 11 Iron Hills Dwarf Warriors with shield and spear, one with shield, spear, and banner, and one on a goat. The game was Total Conquest from the double section of the match play guide. This is one of those more fiddly scenarios with a lot to it. First, your force is split into two and your primary force deploys within six inches of the center of the table. For us, that would be Treebeard and Quickbeam. For them, that would be the Iron Hills Dwarves. The rest of your army will deploy using the Maelstrom rules. There are then five markers on the table, which you can see here. Your objective is to capture the markers, to break the enemy force, and to cause wounds to the enemy leader. We took first turn priority. They called a move with the Dwarves, and we countercalled. Our entire plan hinged around Tom Bombadil and being able to castle our mighty Ents up around him. Tom Bombadil has a spell called Refreshing Song, which can replenish one might, will, or fate to a hero in every turn. Without that, we wouldn't last long against the Dwarves. We'd have to roll to see if Tom would arrive. Uh, we need to roll for deployment of yep. this guy then. No, no, not yet, because it's technically you. It's the end of your move, we won by a of course. Oh, well. six if you want. Yeah, okay, thanks. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wait, it's, it's on camera, it's on camera, I got six. <laughs> In their move, the dwarves gave chase, moving as quickly as their little legs would carry them towards the fleeing Ents. They then rolled a six on their maelstrom deployment for Thranduil's warband and came up right behind the fleeing Ents in the woods. It was then time for our maelstrom deployment roll, and even though they'd been very kind and allowed us to keep the six, we felt that would be a bit cheeky. Okay, so should we roll again? Yeah, roll again. For, for fairness. No, we'll, we'll roll it. Um, okay. Well, if you I will keep the, keep the six then, shall we? <laughs> Not an ideal start. Beachbone spent the might in the hope of arriving in a more favourable location next turn. And then roll for Tom. Tom, can you do it, please? All right. Oh. Three. Three. And he ain't got the he got he got mic. <laughs> After some deliberation, they decided to whack Tom right behind the elven lines. He could not move through their control zones, so feasibly he could be stuck there for the entire game. Cool. Okay, so we're on to priority turn two then, right? We are. Come on, Tim. Come on, Tim. Ah, uh, you... Uh... It's alright, we didn't want priority this time anyway. No one could reach us this turn, so Tim and I were content not to call a heroic. The elves left as many warriors as were needed to block Tom Bombadil in by the edge of the board, and otherwise moved up. The dwarves shuffled in on the other side. One. But with Treebeard's, uh, with Quickbeam's eight, he could come and just nick this knight out. Let's do that. Let's definitely do that. We then line Treebeard up for the perfect hurl against Thranduil and his horse. Can we line up a, we can't line up a hurl, can we? Because uh, well, you into, could... into Thranders. I mean, that's an excellent, excellent, excellent idea. And yes, we can. It was then time for the big moment. 
we'd see where Beachbone would finally arrive. Uh, all right, so Beachbone. Big one. Think 60 thoughts. Think 60 thoughts. You're a very 60 guy, so ask. A three would have put Beachbone out of commission for basically the whole game, so we decided to mite it. So Beachbone had spent two might simply showing up. Not a great start for him. We dumped him at the south side of the board edge near the farm. In the combats, we started with Quickbeam, who made very short work of the Elven Knight. Okay, shall I roll for Treebeard? We're gonna hurl this one, right? Yeah, we'll hurl. Uh, on five. Six. 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 We wanted to get Thranduil dismounted, and to be honest, just kind of wanted to hurl, so we spent the might to win the fight. We are really burning through the might. It <laughs> Tom, better come in handy. It was a successful hurl. We killed two elves and dismounted Thranduil and did a wound to Thranduil at the same time. And it's why I love Ents. Party! Thanks, Tim. Three. Three. Sorry, we've not won any of them yet. They took priority and we did not challenge them. The dwarves closed in as quickly as they possibly could, but they still couldn't get there this turn. The elves were therefore trying to close in around the Ents and basically keep out of trouble until their reinforcements arrived. Tom Bombadil charged this turn, hoping he could push back that elf by the board edge and escape the trap. Going into combats, Treebeard called a heroic. He was now within striking distance of Thranduil. In response, Thranduil struck. All right, do you want to do it this time? No, you do it. All right, I've got, I've got my fang on dice. On a five. Um... With a five, Treebeard's heroic combat was triggered, which meant we had to decide where he was going to go. Given Thranduil had struck, Tim and I were spitballing as to whether or not it was still worth charging him, and Tim proposed an alternative, charging Dane instead. Oh, it's a baller move. I'm down, I'm down. If you think it's, if you, I mean, I was, I, I was on, I was on like Tom rescue mission, but. Well, we've got Beachbone to come to Tom's rescue. He's gonna be like oh, by himself I'm down. anyway. I'm down, I'm down, I'm down. Should we do it? Oh, this is a mistake. We might hurl him just for laughs. Let's, um... A good idea, but before we can hurl him, we do have to beat him. Oh, oh, it's juicy. oh no, it's not enough. It's not enough. It's only got, it's only got one mate. <laughs> Oh, oh, I got it. I got it. They didn't manage to wound him, but there's no doubt that went badly. Tom Bombadil, of course, automatically won his combat and pushed his elf back. As long as we had priority next turn, he'd be able to escape. Five. It's good. It's good. It's good one. It's good one. Oh. Any heroics for you guys? Dane or Paul? Dane call move, so. Call we'll call a move with uh, Tree Beard. Right, so we'll be good then. We'll be good. We'll be good. We're good trees. Yeah. <laughs> so we're just pelting off back that way. Yeah. So Dane will still catch us. That's but... fine. Dane did charge, using the pig's mighty move to get right back under Treebeard's feet. Quickbeam raced over to the aid of the older, wiser Ent, looking to take on some dwarves of his own. Finally, Beachbone waded toward the woods, where the waiting elves surrounded him. King Thranduil himself led the charge. You'd think that the elves of the Woodland Realm would have better respect for the Ents they themselves awakened. On its way in, Thranduil cast Nature's Wrath, knocking even mighty Beachbone to the ground, and preventing him from effectively defending himself this turn. Dane called a strike against Treebeard, which the Ent could do nothing about, and Thranduil called a strike against Beachbone. One way or another, this was shaping up to be a critical turn. And that's when I came up with my genius Masterstroke. What if Quigbeam did a heroic combat? went over to Thranduil and paired him off Beachbone's combat, then Beachbone had the fight and wouldn't get obliterated this turn, and for double safety, Quickbeam could throw Thranduil into Beachbone's combat, meaning that everyone gets knocked prone and Beachbone can't be hurt even if he loses the fight. Having already spent up on Might, I felt that this was our one narrow path to victory. Having called the combat, Quickbeam went first. Wish me luck. Good luck, good luck. Six. Sixes! Oh, lovely stuff. I want that again. Oh, thank God. Yeah, we'll do it. Do oh, it, uh, terrifying aura. Oh, yeah, yeah, terror, yeah. Terror, terror, terror. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, thank God. Right. <laughs> then came the last part of my deliciously devious master plan. If we win this one um, and, and hurl Thranduil into this combat, we knock all the opponents prone. You've before, haven't you? Mate, <laughs> I've got my thinking hat on. Okay, we need a big six then. Oh, they've not five. got it. Five. So, you we guys have it on fight. Win. So, Thranduil, having struck, takes it on his fight value. It was always a long shot, he has four attacks, so statistically speaking, he was likely to get a six. All that matters now is that Beachbone gets a six in his own combat. Oh, five. A chance. Oh, that's unfortunate. That was seriously 
painful. With the plus one to wound from Thranduil, and them re-rolling ones to wound for stabbing, they quickly dispatched Beachbone. It was, it was, it was, it was a great idea. It just didn't work out. The dice are assholes. <laughs> hey, let's get kill tree there too now. Right, so the strike. Yeah. You ready for the one? What do you get? Two. Oh, two. so it's roaring. Treebeard put in a respectable effort with his five, but Dane got himself a six. But you know, we had three fate and three wounds. It wasn't going to be over this turn. Six, 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 Oh my <laughs> good god. Hang on, how many sixes are in? One, two, three, oh, four, five, six. That, that, <laughs> that is monstrous. Well, the game is to swim. So Treebeard goes down two. Two end heroes in one turn. I don't think I'm being overly defeatist by suggesting that our odds have just dropped. I'm not sure how even Tom could bail us out of this one, given how we just had one ent and that unusual foresty boy to capture five objectives against an army of dwarves and elves. So things were looking bleak, but we weren't giving up just yet. Quickbeam charged a horse and the merry fellow charged Thranduil. Dane and a few dwarves charged Merry, and the rest of the dwarves charged Pippin. Dane went first and we prayed for poor Merry. Oh, he's oh, no, he's... <laughs> So Merry beat Dane. Incredible stuff. He didn't do a wound, but he's alive, and that's what matters for the moment. Mary belongs to James Twamley. You've done us proud already. Let's see if you can keep it going long enough for us to scrape back some victory points. Quickbeam managed to bludgeon a couple of elves, which I've, I've got to admit did make us feel quite a lot better. And we were on to the next turn. They got priority and moved. And surprise, surprise, it didn't take much for them to lock down the three remaining models they could charge. Tom Bombadil, being immune to charging, basically just sat and watched. Ignores the control zone and, and that's a one, two, yeah, the bone, uh, three, four. That's a good bash territory. We're going to pick this guy up. Yeah, we 100% doing that. Yeah. Uh, combat then. The first combat they did was Merry against Dane. Determined this time they would pummel him into the dust. He had, after all, had the audacity to continue living. Once again, Dane got a five high. Four, five. Ten, so, chance again. So on a lucky six. Oh. <laughs> He is. James Twomley, you are a good luck star. Your Merry is doing the absolute business. But he would then need a six and a five to do any wounds. That's a six! Two and eight as well. It is! Yes! yes. <laughs> Quickbeam then won his combat and using bludgeon killed everyone in base contact with him. Quickbeam belongs to Sean Clark and again, Sean, my lucky star, he is doing much better work than the other two ends did. You have my respect. For now, anyway. The next turn was basically rinse and repeat. The only thing we really needed to know was whether Merry could pull it off for a third time in a row. Come on, third time in a row. A five oh, high. Five and you also got five deaths. Oh. No, yeah, not again. Uh, so this time's two. Yeah. He's dead. He's not rolled oh. a six since. Oh. Oh. No shame, Merry. You have done us proud. Certainly more than Treebeard can claim. Quickbeam had to spend all of his might to win his fight, but it was worth it to get to do the best thing you can do in Middle Earth strategy battle game, bludgeon. Then we just had to see how many would die. Yep, yep, yep. Also dead. So good. That actually broke them, and Quickbeam was racking up quite a tally of scalps. With that, something truly miraculous started happening. The dwarves started running away. He runs away. Oh my goodness. That one stays because he's palace guard. That one alone has lost them one objective, and he wouldn't be the last. Oh! 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 Unfortunately, as exciting as that was, and genuinely as close as that took us to victory, the next turn, they killed Quickbeam, and the game ended. Having had such a calamitous turn, in which both Beachbone and Treebeard were killed in two successive rounds of combat, we actually came dangerously close to pulling it back and getting a nail-biter of a victory. Whilst it wasn't to be, it had been one of the best games of MESBG I have ever played. An absolute blast, so close, and I just love to bludgeon things with the end. So many thanks indeed to Jonathan and Harry, an excellent game. After a short break, we were on to the next round. For game two, we'd be fighting Adam and Bryce. They had the Dragon Emperor with seven warriors, seven black dragons, and a cataphract. They also had the Witch King with eight black Numenorians, four Miranda Orcs, 
and six Org Trackers. The game was Clash of Champions from the double section of the Match Play Guide. This basically means trying to get the most kills you can with your leader. This is a scenario that suits us well. All right. I think we're gonna just sit right here. Or you just wanna sit here and be like, go on then. <laughs> just throw your rocks until you get bored, lads. We'll take the nil-nil <laughs> draw. Like. Sadly, they did decide to move up. It's a shame I would have loved nothing more than to spend the next two hours just lobbing rocks at the Dragon Emperor. I can think of a few people who would find that very cathartic. Cool, okay, so that's, um, that's shooting then, right? Uh, yeah, shooting. Power priority? Uh, yes, take it away. Okay. Should we just walk back one at the Witch King to start with? Our first target was the Witch King of Angmar. Sure, no man might be able to kill him, but a half-ton stone launched 30 feet through the air by an 8 meter tall anthropomorphized tree with the vague facial expressions of a man might just do the trick. Miraculously, the rock passed two in the ways and hit the Witch King. That's a wound. Oh, okay. Uh, that's a one from my first fate. They managed to save it on his second fate, the Witch King only has one wound, so losing both fates in the first turn to the first stone throw was a bit of a blow. So Treebeard first on the um, uh, Dragon Emperor. That's a hit on a six. That stone sailed through the air, passing both the in-the-way troops and hit the Palanquin, doing a wound to it. And so far, this is probably the most successful shooting phase I've ever had in any game of Messburger ever. So that was a bit scary. Yeah. Wasn't too fatal off the Witch King, it's not ideal. Uh... Probably quite predictably, there was no wounds on the trees in the return shooting, and we were back to priority. Yeah, you're gone. Take it away. Adam, do you want to I knew I shouldn't have trusted you. Yeah, no. Clearly, the Witch King's close encounter with a boulder had evaporated the we might sit here and do nothing temptation. Evil tried to close the lines as fast as possible. On the way in, the Witch King tried to compel Beachbone, but he resisted it on a four. In typical indecisive fashion, we actually abandoned our rock hurling strategy anyway and charged towards their lines. Tom blocked up a gap in the wall on the flank. Quick Beam won the only combat of this turn, killed two of the Dragon Emperor's little rascals, and we were on to the next turn. They moved first and started closing in around the Ents, although with a few fluff terror checks, so missing out on some critical traps. Still, we weren't without peril and had learned our lessons from the first game. I was nervous going into Treebeard's combat. Can you please, can I have a, a, a pat for good luck or something? Thank you. Treebeard went first and despite winning his combat, only managed to kill a single model. Beachbone then also killed just a single model. Clearly, it was going to be up to Quickbeam to once again carry the whole team. Perhaps with a hobbit chipping in at clutch moments. So Quickbeam fought the Dragon Emperor. The Dragon Emperor struck and rolled a 5 and Quickbeam only rolled a 4. However, knowing that we could get Quick Beam's might back with Tom Bombadil's refreshing song, we decided to just splurge out all in one go and might it up to a six. They were feeling more frugal and decided to save their might for strikes later in the game. In typical Quick Beamy fashion, he delivered. He did two wounds on the Dragon Emperor and they had to spend all three fate to save him. It was time for priority and this time we did elect to call a move with Beachbone. When all was said and done, we'd managed to tie up the Dragon Emperor with Tom Bombadil and the rest of the Ents had done their best to form a little castle. The enemy then swamped in around us. All right, we'll go on with Beachbone then. So Beachbone went first with a heroic combat. Yeah, you usually you, you do Beachbone. Make us proud. Six. Six. Yes. Oh, I'm using six Getting his combat off, Beachbone could move and set up the perfect hurl. Our target, a cheeky dismount on the Witch King. But first it was Quick Beam's turn for some crumping. Six. Six. Uh, I think this is bludgeoning territory. But then, the ultimate betrayal. I guess it was going to happen sooner or later. Bludgeon finally let me down. It killed only a single orc, and even the bludgeon survived. Although I do have to expect it was quite humiliated. Yeah. So great! Let's do Treebeard. Treebeard it is. Roll and see if you get six. No! Oh. Big fluff. Big fluff. You sound like Donkey Kong. <laughs> so Treebeard fluffed it as well. Guys, bless my bark. As Treebeard would say, this is a right shit show. You know, just for once. Can we go one game without Treebeard having to drop the bloody hobbits? Uh, and then uh, uh, it's just Beachbone, right? Yeah. Yes. Um, so I have one guy in a spear. You've got one guy. Right. Five. Five. Uh, so we're gonna hurl. So that definitely gets fine. into the Witch King. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
So the Witch King of Angmar is thrown from his horse by a man in robes being hurled by a giant tree. Tactically, I'm not sure how sound that really was. I'm not sure the Witch King was ever actually going to charge an end, but it was very, very funny. And then finally, the turn collapsed in on itself, cascading down to create a subatomic singularity from which nothing could escape until it finally exploded with a new turn. Things were looking pretty good for us right now, but we were still nervous about the Dragon Emperor. Fortunately, Tom Bombadil had a plan for that. He would just stand in front of the Dragon Emperor for the rest of the game, effectively taking on the job of a traffic bollard. They started their fight back policy with a cheeky transfix on Beachbone, who only had one will to resist. Okay, Beachbone's will. Kiss and we back. keep it as well. Perfect. Goddamn. I think out of somewhat desperation, the Witch King then did charge Beachbone. For Team Evil, it really was now or never. So we're picking the Witch King up for Bludgeon, right? Yeah. <laughs> I can't wait for you to get bludgeoned with the Witch King. <laughs> oh yeah, um, it's going to be great. At this point, one of the cameras died, and I didn't appreciate getting shade about it in real time. <laughs> the classic battle camper experience. <laughs> I'm so sorry guys, at this point my camera died. <laughs> In any event, this is how it kept on going until the end of the game, which was actually just the next turn. The Ents kept on killing, and Tom Bombadil kept the Dragon Emperor locked in place. I must admit, I did feel a bit bad about that. They'd obviously sunk a lot of points into one big fancy model, and Tom came along and basically just said, no. I think that's one of the reasons that Tom is controversial. It's not that he's good within the normal parameters that the rule set sets out, it's that he just doesn't engage with it at all. I do wonder whether dismounting the Dragon Emperor would have been the shout, using the extra black dragons to create a wall between him and Tom, but I am by no means an expert. What matters is that it was another smashing game. Thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. And that's all we needed. One win and one loss. We have the chance to finish the day above average. Better than I could ever have hoped for. So, with no time to waste, we were feeling cautiously optimistic going into Game 3, the final for the doubles tournament of Articon 2023. We'd be playing Paul Kelly, and Cameron Bell. They had Razgush, an Orc Captain, and the Spider Queen, a bunch of Orcs no one cares about, and 10 giant spiders. And the worst of the lot, the secret weapon, a bloody Bat Swarm. Je detest le Bat Swarm. The game was No Escape, in which we're trying to kill the leaders of primary and secondary forces, which sounds pretty good for us, but deployment is ooh, funky. Your army is split in half, and there's always going to be some enemy between you and your allies. This means Tom won't be helping Quickbeam or Treebeard anytime soon, and because they have quick moving spiders, they're going to rush the rear of the Ent line and cause some real problems real quick. So the main overhead camera wasn't filming for the first 15 minutes of the game, so we'll jump right into the thick of it when things are already looking a bit bleak. Treebeard and Quickbeam were really up against it, just in the center trying to hold the line against both enemy forces because they'd been trapped up against the Orcs and the Spiders had a massive move with which they could come up behind them in no time flat. We were just praying that we could survive long enough for Tom Bombadil and Beachbone to save the day. However, before any of that, the two hobbits riding Treebeard managed to nail two wounds on the bats with double sixes on their throw stones. Sensational. The first important combat in the first round of combats was Quick Beam in the center there. He was against Razgush, who'd called a strike and whose fight had got up to 10. Quick Beam doesn't have strike, so they won the fight and very quickly dispatched him, wounding on fives and re rolling everything. Oh, roasted bar. Mm. I thought you were on my side. Sorry, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, he needs to beach burn. Yep. I'm going to shield. Yep. Shield or not, Beachbone did, unsurprisingly, manage to take this one. With his big win, Tim hurled an orc down this way, killing the hurled orc and the guy he landed on. Tom Bombadil just wins, and the other's back off. What, what a chat. Oh. <laughs> oh, Tom, he's a merry fellow. His coat is blue and his boots are bright yellow. Reminds you of the, uh, if you listen to the uh, audiobook, this is space. And he's uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Whatever he sings, it's like, it's, uh, his, his reading is amazing. His singing is just like, please stop. Please, <laughs> God, stop. I will, I will take that hint. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Yeah, quarantine. Should I roll it? Yeah, go on. Not the one. I mean, no, whoever, whichever. Oh, hey. oh my god! 
we actually got priority. I think genuinely for maybe the third time all day. We only actually had one model on this side of the board to move, but of course, in typical Mesbiger fashion, the fewer models you have to move, the longer it's going to take you to move them. It took bloody ages. It was then their turn to move, and they wanted the little spiders to swarm in around Treebeard, which meant passing some courage checks. How did that go? No, 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 no. There we go, we got one. Although we can't actually go on that side, I've got to go inside. The hobbits riding Treebeard continued their obsessive pelting of the bats with stones and did another wound, down to one wound on the bats, all thanks to Hobbit Rocks. Importantly for this turn, Treebeard and the Spider Queen went to a strike off. Beachbone went first, and in a moment of absolute purity, he hurled his opposing orc into Treebeard's combat. This knocked everyone but the Spider Queen and Treebeard prone, definitely raising his chances of survival this turn. It also wounded Razgush, which he failed to save on his only fate. That was a delicious cherry on top of this extraordinarily violent cake. Spike off Spider Queen and uh, Treebeard. Yeah. Take big thoughts. I need a two. Okay, not ten. I need a four. four. Are you <laughs> you were just wow. gonna say whatever. <laughs> <I'm ready. laughs> I need not one. Yeah, that's it, mate. Yeah. Okay, so uh, two roll then. Uh, so we get all of your dice still, but you just can't yep. strike. Okay. One sixes. There's one of six. So. Razgush. One sixes. Six. So uh, one two three roll. you four five six us. Yeah. Oh, I can't stand this, Tim. Please don't look at me like that. Please don't look I'm at me at all. Right. Actually, thank you. <laughs> look in the mirror. Oh, oh, oh. It didn't help, it didn't help! So that's still, that's still fives, isn't it? Five. Yeah, so fives we're rolling again. Christ, it's nasty. Uh, so that's two. Oh, we're rolling these. Really nasty. Is he trapped? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I've got a cock dice here. Yep. Four. Oh, I mean, he's not going to die anyway, but... Oh, actually, he might oh. die. Uh, so... Might uh, well, we've got that. Mike, so... Okay, yeah, one save. That's a two. Oh, one wounds, no fate. Get Tom um, Bombadil over here, please. The next turn would be utterly critical. We had to get Tom Bombadil over to the stricken Treebeard as soon as possible. Unfortunately, we lost priority and then the move off as well. The enemy therefore closed in and we just made no progress. We had to hope a miracle would save us for one more turn and we'd get to move next turn. In the meantime, we were back to a blood racing strike off between the Spider Queen and Treebeard. Strike off. Strike off. My heart's actually. Need again? We're up to 10. Okay, I need to. I go also up to 10. Ooh. Okay, should I roll my three? Yeah, roll my yeah, three. No might. No might. Huh. Four high. Four. Uh, we got it with a five. Yeah, yep. Ah, it's dead. With Treebeard gone, realistically, our hopes went with him. Beachbone followed soon after, and of course the hobbits couldn't hold back the tide alone. We'd been absolutely smashed in this game, predominantly due to the immense killing power of the Spider Queen. I don't think it was a foregone conclusion. There were a couple of roll-offs, particularly when Treebeard was fighting the Spider Queen, where it was really just anybody's game. If we'd taken either of those combats, potentially we could have killed the Spider Queen, and then we had a lot of killing power with which to wreak havoc amongst the remaining spiders and orcs. But such is the fickle nature of this hobby, and that left us with two defeats and one win. I know I've said this for every game, but it was superb. They just really embodied the spirit of a doubles game. Silliness, fun, low stakes. It was chill, and at the same time, absolutely horrific. Loved it. But the day wasn't over yet. We still had one game left to play. Not as doubles, but as singles, in a unique scenario to Ardacon called Chaos in Arda. Chaos in Arda involves four players on the same board all duking it out, but without any set objectives, instead they draw objectives from a set of cards, and those can either score them points or help them to perform crazy actions on the tabletop. This allows people to pull off some pretty zany antics, although as you'll see in this video, I'm afraid I don't think I really got into the spirit of it quickly enough. The other players at the table were, first, longtime friend of the channel, Frederick Schultz, he had Mordor with a mix of Urukai, Orcs, and Shelob at the front. Dirk Helms brought the three Hunters, and Ted Cantu brought the Fiefdoms. This is what's cool about Articon: four different players from four different countries, all battling it out together. I'd brought Beachbone and a pair of Ents. Quick Beam in this game is simply standing in for a regular Ent. My first objective was simply to walk Beachbone from one side of the board to the other. That feels like it should be straightforward enough. 
As you can see, as turns pass, the Ents just traipse across the board boringly, not fighting anyone and with no one really wanting to fight them, understandably. The three hunters were getting properly stuck in in the southwest, and Shelob was bearing down both on the Ents and also on the fiefdoms. Now, you can discard one card at the end of each turn and draw a new one, which I've been doing in the hope of finding something a little bit more exciting to achieve, and whilst I didn't find that, I did find something that might help me complete this one objective, get it out of the way, and move on to something a little bit more zesty. I'm starting with myself, we're going to nominate one model, any model, and remove it from the table, and then it redeploys using the Maelstrom rules this turn. So I can remove Beachbone, and as long as I don't get a 4, I can then replace him on my side of the board and complete that objective so that I can then move on to something a bit more exciting, by which I of course mean violent. So remove him, I did. I moved the other two Ents up in the hope that they would be close to where Beachbone emerged, and then it was time for the big moment. Oh, whatever. Um, okay, and now here's yeah. the big risk. Woo, I, I, I really, <laughs> really took a risk here. Yeah. Not a f four, please, not a four. <laughs> Too bad, so man. he goes all the way back over there again. <laughs> that is West, right? Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 600, bring him back on. So there you go, Beachbone was starting again. And I decided enough was enough. I, I don't care. I just don't care about winning Chaos and Arda. No one should. It's not the purpose of the game. Let's go and punch things. You'll see here how over much of the rest of the game, the battle lines were redrawn. The orcs reoriented towards the remaining fiefdoms, who had taken a bit of a battering. The three hunters reformed and tried to come to the centre of the board, and the Ents stood around for a little bit longer, simply so Beachbone could rejoin them, and they could wade in together and have a whale of a time before the game ended. So whilst exciting things happened, like the clansmen going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Shelob, I was just standing around. A phalanx of fiefdom pikemen were being worn down in a heroic last stand against the orcs' onslaught. I was just, you know, hanging out. By the time they were reunited, there was only about 20 minutes left in the game. But they made the best of a bad situation. Arriving with two thoroughly weakened forces, they simply crashed their way through the enemy lines. By the end of the game, we might not have won, but I was satisfied that we'd taken an admirable number of lives and we cut a suitably imposing silhouette against the survivors below. The final score was a tie, both for first and second. Myself and Frederick were on three, Dirk and Ted were on five. Without any disrespect to Frederick, I think those scores reflected how well people actually participated in the spirit of the game. Dirk and Ted both just got absolutely stuck in right from the beginning and were scoring points right from the beginning. So even though they took a hammering and ended the game without much really of anything left on the board, I think they deserved the win. Chaos in Arda is spectacularly good fun. I would happily do a full day, three games, Chaos in Arda, if that was on offer at the event next year. The day finished out with a talk from Tom and Damien about the SBG fanzine. I've talked about the magazine on the channel before. It is an absolutely fantastic project with some staggeringly beautiful battle reports and builds in it. Just a passionate celebration of all things Mesbiger. Having a talk there was such a nice idea and I'd like to see more of this kind of thing from more tournaments. Anyway, I'll be back soon for the singles events. I'll be finally getting my Rohan back on the table. I've been doing so much filming over the past couple of months. You've all been very patient. I know it feels a bit like the channel has died a death, but it hasn't. Stuff's been happening. So thank you so much for sticking with me and being patient. Uh, I can't wait to show you everything I've got, really but especially the two-week Tolkien tour in which I painted my 1,000-point Isengard force in the van whilst discovering locations from Tolkien's life. And a particular thanks to my patrons, of course, who have basically supported me while I've been faff assing about. And I've got loads of prizes to post out and miniatures to assign, but you've kept the videos going this year. As for this video's prize, it just has to go to James Twomley, because your Merry held up Dane for two turns in a row and caused a wound on him, so nearly winning us the game. I'm going to send you a copy of the latest edition of the SBG magazine with its fantastic Helm's Deep battle report. Thanks again everyone and join the Facebook group, it's better than it sounds. Links are where they always are. Now of course at this point I'd usually have a clip that was unrelated but I'd sort of picked up somewhere in the day and couldn't figure out where else to crowbar it in. This time I'm sharing pictures from a thread that came up in the Facebook group of people celebrating their mixed love for their animals and their hobby. So let's do this. 
So we start with a majestic floof sitting on a really quite beautiful board. Another cat disrupting some gameplay. That that's dodgy. That he's about to wreck some Space Marines' days. Uh, this person didn't quite understand the brief, but I'm all here for it. Uh, this this is wholesome content. Big woofer, little woofer. Ooh, we've got a goofy boy uh, and also a dog there. This dog could not be more over your bullshit. It's just not into it. I'm sorry. There is no way that glue didn't end up in that sandwich. I'm sorry. Ah, Christ! It's got no pupils. Oh, a lizard. That's a very nice change of pace. The cat up to dodgy shit, no doubt. And of the same cat, the same cat again. I think the same cat again. I think. That cat has the Armada Superstar Destroyer. I'm very jealous. A dog with a Sildor or a Lendil? I can never remember which one's which. Cute guinea pigs, a different interpretation on the brief. D Tom, uh, Damien submitted him as, as his pet, and that's official now. A snake in the howder of a mummock. Serpent, serpent horde. Definite winner. Everyone's favourite hobby rabbit from Armies of Middle Earth. And my own rapscallions guarding my pile of shame. There we are. I hope that was as good for you as it was for me.